so we're going to start as we usually do by asking um, for you each in turn to share the why and when you made the brave decision to make your life in art. So, yeah, let me start. Well, uh, you know, this was a kind of a stintual thing that because of uh, since my early age, I, I started doing art from six year old. And, uh, and then I uh, start with uh, the school. Uh, in Italy, there is an high school uh, art and art. Mm -hmm. And uh, already I got the Liceo Artistico and then the Academy of Fine Art. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, working, I understand that uh, art, doing art is, uh, is a way to understand uh, yourself and, and the reality. And, uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, develop your knowledge. Mm -hmm. This is uh, uh, the thing. And boy, with, with the, the, the years, uh, with my research, I have tried to express a kind of vision of the, the world. I try to bring a vision, my vision of the world. And this is, has been my idea. That's, um, thank you for sharing that. I, I'd like to think, to dig a little bit deeper into this idea. You know, people often say, well, I just always thought I would be six years old. You know, well, what, what was it? And when yeah. you were six, like what was yeah, it that you know, was exciting uh, to you? Do you remember those moments of Yeah, that, uh, you know, I, I always, uh, uh, you know, for sure at the beginning, uh, uh, the, the idea of art was uh, mimesis. Mm -hmm. Mimesis, you know, to replicate, uh, replicate the object, uh, then the experience. Was uh, it that excitement that you could do that? Yeah, so you, you know, to... my, also, I am, uh, has been always, uh, uh, you know, I, I use a lot of uh, my imagination. Yeah. And, um, you know, for me, it was uh, just uh, uh, come inside my own, you know, and, and, uh, and work and uh, take, uh, you know, the ple pleasure, the pleasure for sure has been uh, always uh, uh, a big spark, you know, mm. for, to, to work. Boy, with the, the age when uh, I became uh, uh, older, <laughs> uh, became also a kind of uh, to develop a, a con conscience. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, just not just a pleasure, but also, uh, you know, to, to be in, in, the, in the life with a view. A responsibility. To, to, a responsibility, yes. Mm -hmm. It's not just, a, it's a pleasure for sure, mm -hmm. because you have to enjoy when you work. But at the same time, it's also develop a, a vision. This is, for me, it, it's, uh, you know, this, uh, I develop uh, this idea also with, uh, uh, my, uh, I met uh, other artists. And uh, also, you know, this uh, has been always, uh, I, uh, you know, you, you, I, I uh, built my art experience on crisis too, because if you have a crisis, you don't develop. You know, sometimes you're like some master. You know, what word and you are dead. <laughs> so you try to improve and try to develop uh, your uh, my in this case uh, what I do. My, I, I believe in in. Uh, in uh, this, uh, for example, uh, the word to do mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in Italiano, in Italian is, uh, uh, in the Greek actually, is fare. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't do, you don't understand uh, what you need, uh, what you're looking for. And, uh, uh, and so, uh, you know, this is a uh, point many things comes, you know, for you, uh, you know, but arrive the moment that you have your garden, your garden where you, you, you know what you want to do, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for sure you are still researching, but you take care of your, you try to give body uh, your vision. It's, it's yeah. world building and your world view. So yeah. the garden you're saying is like, that's the world you want to create. 
Like yeah, that, yeah. Know. Also, describe, you know, describe for sure. An artist have to give uh, give uh, an, an idea or actually a, a vision of the future, but at the same time, to start from the vision of the reality, you know. Uh, and uh, an artist have to have an, a, a glance, a synthetic glance on the reality, because uh, we are too specific sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we lose this idea of the the world, the cosmos. Okay, we are too in the deep. But you know, it's important to go in the deep because uh, uh, you understand many things. But also, you have to always uh, have a, a global vision uh, that uh, Western society lost a little because uh, you know for sure. You know the other society where uh, there are uh, religion. They have they take care of this idea, but we are not more used to follow religion. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, dogma. The dogma, uh, because we are so with our society grew up on the enlightenment. And so, uh, uh, we believe in, in the science. Uh, and so for us, uh, you know, all, everything is uh, unconscious. It's kind of a mystery, you know, we, we, don't, uh, we don't know really. And art helps to understand better yourself. Mm -hmm. if, you, uh, if you, you know, go, if you are interested to do it, you know, and, uh, but, uh, you know, every, every, uh, artists have a different uh, route, a different uh, tree, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, develop uh, uh, individual language. Actually, this is a uh, uh, belong to our society. Every artist has an, uh, a language, a different language. In the past, uh, you know, uh, you know the society gave more or less one language you have to follow. Visual no? language, yeah. we, we, we are free, free, you know, and so we can develop, uh, uh, this is, is great, you know, this is great. Uh, but sometimes we need some, uh, we, have, we have rules, but uh, we have more rules for a business, for, uh, you know, to keep quiet, the, the uh, rapport between uh, men. Mm -hmm. But we have no rules much about unconscious, so we don't, don't know too much this. Um, so the artist is exploring and... Um, exactly, exactly. Is, is the, the entity within our society that has the chance to think and deeply, as you're saying, and to explore those ideas that are not yet yeah, yeah, totally and this is, uh, yeah, and this, uh, you know, uh, also the history is important too. The history, to have, to have an idea of the history, where you come from, you know, uh, which are, uh, but the thing is that today with the, 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 the globalization, we have all the world is contemporary mm -hmm. because we can, as well, we can display in a museum stuff from the BC century, and uh, it's real, and uh, and then uh, we change the present, change the idea of the history too. This uh, historiography, exactly. Okay. Uh, but to to have an idea of the history, for, for sure, you have not to be conditioned by history because uh, sometimes in Europe we have a lot of history, and so and this, uh, uh, you know, is a tradition. But, we have to understand each other what mean tradition and uh, and if it is good thing too because uh, you know uh, in the tradition means that there are some uh, rules that uh, people share but at the same time uh, tradition change because change the ages and so the the, the language change uh, uh, because it changed the, the, the language of the century. Yeah, well, yeah. and that goes back to what you were saying about the idea that in the past, artists kind of had to stay within their the visual vocabulary of the time. And then yeah. I like that idea as a wonderful segue to 
the idea of an art historian yes. having, you know, since we are, we both are, yes, it's okay. you know, the, the idea that we, you know, you could look at the past and of course it's easier to see things from far away, but there was, we do have this plethora now of styles and it's a more free all over the world. There are more free societies certainly than there were a few hundred years ago. So I would love to hear this idea of how, um, how that go back. Hit. Yeah, go, I mean, go back to the first question and then I maybe think I, about those. I promise, Prello, I wouldn't say this, but I think it's kind of a nice way to start that I started as a failed artist. So I was painting, but I went to painting classes and they made me copy. And I thought it was terrible. So at six, I stopped painting. <laughs> at six, you at knew six, you didn't want to I copy. I knew I six. didn't want to copy, but the what funny is it, both of you at six. Okay. Exactly. And it but it's fascinating because what happened was by my teens, I was living in the ancient world. I was studying Latin and Greek, and I created, I became part of that world, but that world took me into an interest in mimesis and copying. And so my doctoral dissertation and my continuing research is on mimesis, reception, the, the role of artists, the role of patrons within art history, both in the Greco-Roman world, but also in the 18th century. And interestingly now, because at some point I'd, I'd been working a lot on art and production and so I said to myself, I really need to know how to make something. And that brought me to Clay and brought me to Paolo. And that's how we met. And from there, it's been fascinating because I become immersed in the actual production of sculpture, which was my specialty at any rate. And now I can bring to my art historical work a whole other level of understanding about terracotta, sculpture production in particular, but also um, it's building on many of the things that I was already working on as an art historian in university and beyond. Um, how is art viewed? How is it received? How do icons work? How does the spiritual come into it? And now for the first time, I find myself being a collaborator <laughs> Um, and sort of making the complete circle around. Yeah, well, and that's, um, that partnership is something that we can talk about a little bit later when we talk about credit, but, um, you know, part of this, the question for me is always this, like, it is brave, I think, to go into the arts mm -hmm. in any way yes. is, is a choice that you have to make that is sometimes not um the easy choice mm -hmm. so was there like you, you said how did you become immersed in that in ancient world or was it your I, own i don't think i ever had a choice and i think that that's yeah. probably something that paolo would say too is if you were an artist you can't stop making and so i was the kid in the basement reading the encyclopedia and now i people are often telling me that i'm a walking encyclopedia when i'm taking them around rome um and I think the probably the bravest choices that I made were um, I had a permanent job in Dublin, tenured, and I decided I didn't want to stay there. And so I went to Rome. And that's where, you know, you have to make choices in life, too. And at some point, that was the choice that I made because I saw a lot of opportunities there in terms of research. Um, it doesn't always work out the way you'd like. And so I didn't maybe do as much research as I wanted, but I, with Paolo, we've created a whole other world that's been incredibly enriching for us. And I hope for the people who come to us and that we have, act, you know, that we have interaction with. Yeah, yeah. There's... This is the first time that we are doing a real collaboration on a sculpture, with a sculpture, because we had collaboration yes. uh, in a professional life, you know, with, uh, uh, dealing with Creta, mm -hmm. but the same, and uh, before, you know, you know the, our uh, relationship, you know, it's already, it's it's a lot, you know, because uh, 
It's a collaboration. Yeah, a collaboration <laughs> with the CAs in their life, you know. <laughs> but for with the sculpture, Lorian always, you know, uh, like uh, many uh, wife of artists gave always advice. No, there are some famous artists that had they always have done a wife uh, all the right. time gave uh, they amazing, the side, you know, either. sometimes it's the last word, you know, sometimes we are confused, you know, and so, uh, you know, the wife, the wife gave, you know, the, the direction, okay. You know, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> but, when did you all get together? When, <laughs> exactly. when did you guys all meet up? What year? 1999. You know, we've been together um, for a long time now exactly and so now but oh, with the sculpture i'm saying this is a great a, a, a news this mm -hmm. is really a news yeah that's exciting well we're honored that it happened here at the exactly. place. yes exactly. we're honored to be here i should yes. say that we're so happy to that was our moment of joy to be able to come and then to find that what we had kind of thought oh it might be fun to try to see if maybe we can do something with the 3d printer that that really worked and so we'll be talking more about that. Yeah. Yes, indeed. We, we didn't uh, foresee that uh, we we are going to do something with the 3D. So we were just planning, attempting, you know, map. we did some sculpture now, just that this was completely unpredictable. <laughs> so this, okay, I brought the mold, you know, I tried to, you know, just one month. Yeah. Well, we're going to show um, the people in Zealand sure. when we're done with the slides. We'll show them in real life and everyone else can stand up and look. But for now, um, can everyone in in Zoom, someone unmute yourself and tell me you can see the pictures. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Nishay. Um, Okay. So I'm going to start with this slide that um, Paolo and Lorianne sent the slides. And it looks like the old building with um, one of your sculptures in the window. Uh, I start uh, with the, the clay studio and uh, because uh, that was uh, my first uh, uh, residency, we can say. I, I, I have been before uh, Bird Cliff, upstate New York. But, Bird? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's another uh, yeah. guild, mm -hmm. um, art guild. What year was it that you were here? Oh, 2011. Uh, 2011. Okay. And so this was the show figuration mm -hmm. with other uh, mostly American artists. And uh, boy, uh, the white sculpture is called Excess. And this uh, has been chosen uh, at the Bayano and Sika mm -hmm. the same year, mm -hmm. not the, the, the year later, I think. 2013, and two 30, years later. Two years later. And uh, this, I did uh, the, the, the old uh, play studio. The name is Excess. The white and this, one. yeah, okay. yeah, the, the, the white one. Yeah. Yeah. And this has been chosen also for the sofa poster was, uh, was nice. Oh, uh, yeah. that. Uh, and this has been displayed also at La Lacoste Gallery mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. uh, because she did a selection of the artists that participate uh, at the Bayano. Mm -hmm. the, the, that year uh, in Sika. Okay. Oh, um. So yeah, tell us a little bit about the process that you. Yeah. Um, how you consider what you want your figures to look like? What are they doing? To how I do my sculpture. Well, yeah. Or, what? or how? Like, how do you decide what they look like? What made you? Oh yeah, this uh, you know for sure a sculpture uh, have to be something that uh, have to I have I have to love what I do, and so until I, I don't like I I keep working and uh, until I find the right dimension mm -hmm. of, of the composition uh, you know this I think works for all the people all the artists. Uh, and so you know this uh, particularly has been the first sculpture that uh, I did uh, with the technique uh, of the pipes inside, oh, okay. working solid. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this is a life-size figure, this, uh, this one. It's called the, the, the fire bringer, because, uh, you know, this is my idea of uh, that, you know, the fire is very important in our society because fire and the heat actually uh, 
propel all, all the, uh, you know, every machine. Industry. Uh, yeah. Industry, everything is moved by fire. And so fire uh, is the first uh, is, is, is a, a phenomena that uh, is, is a u- usually important in, in the our society. And so I create this symbolic figure. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a concept, it's just a symbolic concept, the, the fire bearer. As well, sure. there. Uh, and it's a kind of blind because, you know, this fire, we don't know. The, uh, the, yeah, the consequences of this fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, and what's happening? He has yeah, something there, in his you know, it's just an addition. Uh, uh, Sometimes you need uh, something that break the, the, the composition, something that uh, un- unknown. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's uh, actually always uh, um, a ready-made object that belong at the industry. Mm-hmm. Doesn't is not important what means, but helps you know the the composition and the material uh, uh talk about the industry you know the that come from uh, the, the this society you know this is an interesting um you can see it actually in the museum this is the gallery of modern art in rome and it was the first time that there was a a show dedicated to contemporary ceramic sculpture in italy uh, that was not in a, a, a sculptured space. museum ceramic, or a ceramic, ceramic museum. Ceramic. I should it's, say. It's, it's, yeah, and so it was really interesting from that point of view. And you can also see the difference in scale between the small scale figurines that Fowler now sets up in different kinds of installations and the large scale. Is this the same installation? No, no. this uh, this is uh, Kansas City. Um, uh, crane yard uh, oh, yeah. uh, red, star. red star red star yes that uh, has been a, another a longer residency there and this is uh the the, the, the body of work that i display it uh, there are mostly figurines and uh, the sides figures in this case uh, still made with pipes Mm-hmm. The, this and technique that uh, I, I learned uh, uh, from uh, uh, Betty Kavernor when I, I, I did the oh, assistant yeah. uh, in, in Italy, she, she was doing a, a workshop and I mm-hmm. uh, just uh, did the assistant. And then I understood this technique that is not uh, known in Italy. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not known in Italy. Yeah. Huh. Can I just interrupt for a sure, second? Sure. There's, it's interesting as you go through that these are often, everything that Paolo is showing now is connected almost exclusively to different residencies that he's done that have changed his work over time. Yeah, this is, is important because uh, a re- to a residency, it means also adapting. Uh, you know, for sure, in, in this case, uh, I brought a, a, a mold. Uh, I was trying to uh, do a project, you know, but mostly, uh, the, the the most important thing happened by chance. I, I you change uh, uh, unexpected uh, things happened, and so in this case I changed my technique uh, because when I went in China at Jinbejen, where I'm from, uh, por- porcelain, uh, I uh, I bought the pipes to do my technique, you know, and put clay on top. But there, there is clay. This uh, stone, where actually, it's not plastic at all. And so I put clay on pipes and, <laughs> and so then I change. You have to adapt. The residency is, is, a, is a, if you can do it, if you have a chore, if you have a project, you have to display stuff, okay. But if you have time and so experimenting is the best thing. Mm-hmm. This doesn't go as the video. Was it a video? Yeah, it was a video. Oh. And so, oh, yeah, no, this is a video. Yeah, these are a selection of figurine uh, uh, cast, uh, 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 hand models, figures, and then press mold. Press mold, press mold. Yeah, there, there are amazing uh, uh, artisans. They do plaster mold in China, you know. Mm-hmm. You, you can, you can uh, set a show in very brief time if you want. Is this all content? Uh, yes, these are content. Yeah. Yes. Yes, these are all content. Yes. And s- most of them are glazed, but you can see some of them are PVD, the sort of gold and silver. 
that is used more regularly for faucets, bathroom fixtures. Here, yeah, well. here there are all the technique. These are the reduction, where there is a China painting, there is this uh, 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 vapor, physical vapor physical deposition, vapor just deposition. Metallic. Uh, there is gla uh, glaze, because I, I learned that in China, uh, some uh, uh, glazes, they put a soft glaze on a disc high temperature. So they like kind of China painting, but glaze. So they, they put uh, a low temperature glaze on uh, a disc high temperature, like I did this. Okay. And then I have been in, in uh, Netherlands and they do the same thing. They bisque high temperature. And then they glaze uh, different uh, range, but uh, they use a lot of gum inside the glazes. Gum, gum, you know, a, a gum kind of a synthetic gum, Peptapon, uh, Optapix, uh, this name, uh, a little medicine. So, but uh, they stick and you can just paint on top. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this are uh, actually two I did uh, in, in China. Uh, yes, uh, in Dehua. This is another place, very important uh, industrial ceramic hub in, in China. And this has been the first time that almost I didn't touch the sculpture because uh, here there was uh, the artisan that helped me. Uh, I, wor I work in a workshop uh, uh, of a Chinese master with uh, an inventory of uh, molds. Uh, because uh, he, this is a modern artist, but figurative. And so I just uh, brought with me two 3D uh, prototype. They take a mold and then I use particular of the master sculpture. And I said, oh, can you cast please uh, the bear of the prophet? And they cast the bear of the prophet. And I stoke on one side of my sculpture and going on. Yeah. This is called camouflage. Yeah, this is camouflage. And we also had them find bases for us that are traditional bases for religious figurines. Exactly. Blanc de Chine is, um, Dewa is known for Blanc de Chine figurines, particularly Guanlin, I think they're called. Mm -hmm. Guanlin, yeah. 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 More this, uh, this show, uh, this has been a, a solo show in Kansas City made by, um, uh, Scott oh. Eidman Art Saloon, and uh, these are divinities and idols. This uh, has been a show made with very small figuring, a lot of small figuring, deeply colored, and uh, you know, that was uh, the, because I developed a friend, I had time to, to develop friendship in, in Kansas City. And then uh, I get this show, uh, the whole contemporary. Yeah. It's also interesting. You can see from brightly colored to unglazed with the porcelains to brightly colored again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This, uh, now we are in uh, Castel Sant'Angelo in Rome. Uh, this uh, recent uh, show, uh, contemporary artists uh, displayed uh, now, but uh, uh, this sculpture uh, has been made uh, in Netherlands at uh, the European Ceramic Work Center. And uh, this uh, I did with uh, a styrofoam mold, press mold, and, and then, uh, you know, I, I'm used to change the form or, you know, uh, change the original meaning of the, the sculpture. And so that starts too with a 3D image? that is used with a CNC router to create the negative mold. In, in styrofoam. In styrofoam. In styrofoam. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, always in, in Netherlands, uh, I was there three months and so I did the several series of body of works. Uh, Almost 300 pieces. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, uh, and so, but, uh, but in this case, I glaze uh, just with this uh, metal, I, I, will, I was in love you know, with this uh, metal glaze, and uh, I did uh, all one one uh, color. Uh, my, you know, there is always this idea that I start from a, a, a prototype, 
in this case uh, is a, a stereotype because uh, you know stereotype is something that you can duplicate in infinity way uh, but is a kind of object I like to find the subject and so I uh, with an, an, a series of intervention uh, I open the holes I deform I I like a lot to deep clay here I did all mm -hmm. time long I, I deep clay I all uh, kinds of materials into the clay yeah uh, can burn for sure organic and uh, organic material and so then I go to the um the, from the stereotype to the archetype I like the archetype because the archetype is a kind of you know a typology you know I, I like to uh you know the archetype is, is something that you can uh it's a kind of myth mythology no it's very close to mythology because uh, it's an order that uh, belong uh, at the, the, the reality where you know we can uh, belong uh, a different uh, uh, concept no uh, all the people are, are different but every uh, god in this case Mark, it's, a, it's a kind of concept uh, is uh, is different and so i, I like to play sometime uh, uh, usually i work uh, without a project and so the later i found the meaning what i did yeah. You know the rational part is later now uh, before i'm just making making and <laughs> then uh, i found uh, you know so, you know i tried to under investigate what i did you know. so this was shown as metallic votive wall we don't actually have the picture of that oh it's not this one. Oh, this no no this that's a different yeah, but the, another... the concept is similar and um it was at the last korean biennial the yeah. next one you can show me. Oh. <laughs> oh, this, uh, this, uh, for example, is uh, the installation uh, uh, from the, the the stereotype to the archetype, and uh, this uh, no, will no, be no. no. Oh no, this. Sorry, because I saw the <laughs> I other. Know, sorry, 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 sorry. Two no, this uh, uh, has been a collaboration uh, with uh, uh, an Italian artist, uh, a master of the English luster in Umbria. And uh, I did uh, in the Netherlands uh, all the terracotta uh, sculpture, and then he glazed in luster all, all this uh, project. And it's called reflex figure, because reflex, because they reflect, you know, our metallic lusters reflect. And so uh, our uh, figures for reflection figures for reflection I, I you know I like to to play with the titles titles are very important titles are very very important uh, sometime I gave uh, sometimes when you find the titles you find the probably the meaning of what you did mm -hmm. you know it's, it's very very important so this was produced for the Premio Faenza which was unfortunately cancelled but it was then displayed at Palazzo Ducale in Gubbio so at least yes this was this was the uh, premio faenza but unfortunately for the pandemic uh, there wasn't the the show yeah and this uh, it's a uh, installation uh, a wall uh, uh, figurine no stereotype. installation a stereotype from the stereotype. from the stereotype to the archetype that i i did in rhode island uh, at the arch contemporary it was a nice day, uh, 50, 50 days was, no? 50 days working hard there. And, uh, and now this little uh, other uh, collection, I think will update this, this other uh, sculptures. Which Carlos named this group though, Surplus. Yeah, can't come. <laughs> this came, yeah, this, this title, I'm very happy when titled came because I have uh, on my cell phone probably a, a note for titles. Always <laughs> thinking yeah. about titles. Title, titles are very important. Paul Clay was uh, an artist. That, uh, if you read the, the the title of Paul Clay uh, uh, paintings, are the best. He was the best. <laughs>
it was pretty great. There are nice uh, power play here in Philadelphia. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, so we're going to look just a little tour of Creta Rome, um, these beautiful photos that make us want to go there. <laughs> this is actually the view from the terrace of our building. We're literally between the Capitoline Hill. You can see the Victor Emmanuel Monument. This is the Capitol. This is the Capitol. <laughs> This and is, uh, is the monument Gloria The Victor Emmanuel monument. This is the writer Victoria Emmanuel, the first king of Rome. And on the oh, other side is the Jewish quarter. So we're really in the heart of the city. Our space is um, within a 16th century palace, but this is a 15th century room. And the 15th century rooms within the palace are associated with Saint Ignatius and yeah. his mates who lived there for 18 months and wrote the rules of the Jesuits. Oh my gosh. So it's a good place to teach. Yeah. In that room. <laughs> yeah. And that particular image is more or less, we have our kind of mini biennial, let's say, because every two years for the Contemporary Art Week in Rome, we have a show that presents work from past artists in residence. Mm. And this is the last one that we did, maybe more or less. An opening to give you an idea of more of the space and you can see in this in this image on the right hand side that we're starting to use the panels that Paolo had used for the Premio Faenza and they've become part of our installation for the shows as well. This is a show which I put in here specifically because it was from last fall when our residency was just starting up after the pandemic and you can see on the metal wall there are a whole series of 3D, 3D printed works. And these were done by Virginia San Fratello. She was joined in residency by, with um, Maxwell Mustardo. Maxwell Mustardo, okay. And so by chance, it's a, that's my kind of job. We have a committee that selects people, but then I try to put them together. And in this case, they, we accepted the two of them and they both made amphorae storage jars and so it was particularly interesting but it gives a good view of our space oh yeah here, here. we are here you are <laughs> you were here too now everybody on on zoom can see this is the room that we're sitting in right exactly. now exactly in the, the first uh there is uh, the tree d too in this the foreground is, uh, the great news yeah uh, i'm working in uh, the, the second uh in the background in the background <laughs> but uh, you know very very great to be here have been here be here until the end of the month <laughs> yeah and we're so lucky that you set the 3d printer up so yes, now yes, everyone's exactly it. yeah this is a mold you know because uh, we want to show that i my uh, figurine starts from a, a mold plaster oh, molds. Parts. that's an arm Okay. Yeah. yeah, these are arms, and then uh, also, are also this is the only mold that I take, but this is clay. It's just clay. There's a plastic like bracelet that he found on the ground. Around mm -hmm. uh, and find uh, find objects. But in this case, uh, because I, I change my way, I dip directly when it's possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this is just a view of some of the finished works. Now all of them are finished. So maybe we'll do a view. This is the wonderful 3D potter that you had here at the clay studio and we were able to discover that it existed and I figured out how to put it together. As Paolo was saying, we really didn't have a clue what it would be possible to do. Um, but with help from Virginia Sanfratello, whom I would write to on WhatsApp and say, I've done this, it's doing that. Um, <laughs> the first few days were a little touch and go. And I should also thank Chris Rogers, who's a past residence, resident of ours, who's here now as a resident artist, who at some point came in and said, oh, I think you need to do this. I think you need to do that. So he gave me these he two points, two, two hints that made a big difference. Mm -hmm. And that's the, it actually working. Um, and one of, a this star is a is born. star is born. Uh, yeah, this uh, has been uh, the, the title for this uh, small series that maybe will be completed uh, later to some other sculpture. 
Uh, now it's just a uh, raw glaze, but tonight we are loading the kiln. For, <laughs> so we will see about two days. I think um, if someone wants to turn the lights on, I'll show those who are in Zoom land. <laughs> and people, everybody can come stand up from your chairs if you want to come look more closely. And then we can ask questions. Exactly. So I'd like to thank Raymond too for the wonderful photos. <laughs> the problem when you're always doing things is you never get to take photos. So much Just appreciated. Press one. I don't know. Does it work? Does it press? Okay. No. So for... that seems to be everything. Okay. Okay. And we can add yeah. out of the way. So yeah, my are figurative sculpture, but in this case, I'm not naturalistic. Okay. Are no. symbolic uh, and. You know, this comes from inside. It's an, a kind of uh, metaphysic uh, uh, idea. It, it, because, uh, you know, it's... Um, and then I try to break the, the figuration because uh, I like to uh, create uh, an, uh, a kind of estrangement effect to, you know, take the, the, the original meaning, okay? Try to change the meaning of, of the original video and bring you in a, in a different dimension. I don't know if I did, but I am always uh, surprised when I, when I do uh, things. Uh, I, I said, you know, until uh, I found this, I, I, I fired several times. This at least three times. Always says, I keep working until I find a solution that I like. But here, for the first time, he said to me, I approach the surface of the sculptures like a painter does, like an oil painter does. And so he glazes it, he fires it, he glazes it again, he repaints. And so it, those layers are part of a, a painterly process. No? Yes, and uh, just to give an idea, this mostly represents. <clears throat> workers we are surrounded with workers but it's not just because we are here but uh, because uh, you know workers and also businessmen and also uh, ad, um, ad, ad advisor man the publicity man then does publicity uh, marketing exactly and then the producer yeah. consumer these are the but at the same time, I, you know, there was a kind of, because when you represent this uh, uh, phenomena, you know, you get a little sick because, you know, always talking about these things. And so I start creating also uh, nature divinities because uh, I, I wanted to balance you know, this representation of the concept that damage the nature but this can be something that became a, an advertising because uh, this is a negative uh, model but can became a, a kind of advertising and so i start doing something that is a, a nature maybe something uh, that you can adore Okay, we, we don't we, we lose uh, the, the contact with the, the nature because uh, uh, the our the our civilization you know uh, I don't think uh, maybe just if something happened but there is a, an, uh, an a mechanism that is very difficult to change this is uh, this is my idea and so if we don't change because uh, civilization is uh, uh, linked of nature, on nature. You know, if a civilization uh, uh, don't take care of the nature, but also it's, it's like the, the uh, civilization can just uh, destroy itself. Well, that's true. Um, we have a question. Oh, oh, can I just ask, yeah? this, add one thing to, but it might come out of one of these questions, which is, if you look at all of these, they're made from two models printed in 3D. The real innovation of the 3D printer was to actually work directly on the piece that was printed in 3D rather than creating a series. 
So I just wanted to add one of those new important moments. Um, oh, yeah. um, you were saying um, what people were coming in some place on that. Is it totally contemporary or are you looking back at history? Where does these sort of inspiration? Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, I grew up, uh, I, I, I love architecture. I love it. It's just something uh, natural because I grew up with all books before the computer could say. Or you and, and so things come, but you are inside this uh, images. Things come, you know. It's like you, uh, you know. And so I, I use different languages sometimes. You know, kind of the globalization of languages uh, from, come from all the century and all the countries. Uh, but at the same time, I try to uh, put all together, and sometimes it's an hybrid, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, and so come out something different. Uh, they look, some they look some superhero yeah. also, you know, they look some uh, superhero because it's a kind of the our society, you know, this idea, and not uh, by chance uh, we invent the superhero comics. Well, I mean that. I have a question, but I feel yeah. like I should ask this one first. Um, yeah. Brenda asks if you could please explain what you mean by using pipes to do your sculpture. Sorry if I missed yeah, this explanation. Yeah, no, no problem. This, um, you know, you you can uh, you can just uh, see uh, Beth Kavner. Visit the the, the, the website of uh, Beth Kavner. She is the best in uh, this uh, field. And uh, you know, by, like um, what is it, plumbers, pipes, um, armatures. Yeah, so armatures, you create yeah. Um, a metal um, armature using plumbing pipes. Basically, you then model, hand build the sculpture on top of the pipes, and then then you have to try to cut, cut and hollow and, out and hollow out and join all together. And, and then screwed the up uh, while you uh, cut. Uh, and, you know, it, it's a it's a job. And then you you remove the piece and then join together. Put it back again. Again. You put, put it, it back, back together yeah. on yeah. the pipe so that it stands no, out later. No, 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 no. The pipes are the, the just for the building. It's just when it's a fresh way. Just when it's for the fresh. Way. Way. So, the so it is solid leather. Yeah, the hard. A little softer than leather, yes, yeah, so because they have up. to stand up, you not know, play, mm -hmm. so now you can join together. Yeah. But to make life size figures, it's extremely useful. Yeah. I have yeah. an assistant, or even uh, smaller figures. Yeah, the, the process which Beth uses is very complicated, but you can also simply use um, pipes to have an element that folds up the sculpture mm -hmm. in the back mm -hmm. for smaller scale. Also, mm -hmm. Alessandro Gallo used the same technique. Yes. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm. I was surprised to hear you say that it wasn't used in Italy. It sounds like no. a standard kind of. No, but well, we have uh, you know sculpture clay for sure. You do an armature inside. Uh, yeah, uh, that yeah. can be wood. Uh, Just different. Know, uh, okay. This idea of pipes that you can screw up uh, is more rational. That's the difference. But here there are small pipes that we have not in Italy. Yes. We have this size, you know, the three quarters. Uh, three quarters. Uh, yeah. that, but here I found a small one. You can do a small sculpture. You can do a figure and just put a pipe in the spine to a spine and this is standing it up. It allows you to get around the, the problem of gravity, basically. I'm awesome when we have this classic thing and make them sculpture and make them sculpture out of clay. We use exactly what I'm talking about. We use pipes. Yeah. And the heating unit, you just make them and then shine the water. Right. And they really useful. And I learned how to cast it. So mm -hmm. you didn't have to take the armature out, cast it, and then store it apart. Sure. And that's how problems is done. Does anyone have a question? Question about like how do you sell the work? What do I sell? Sell individual pieces, or do you sell kind you of know, groups? No, this individual. I didn't find uh, some, so far one that uh, buy everything together. <laughs> <laughs> but 
And, and this actually is an idea. This was the idea now because uh, it's related to production, but at the same time, is uh, you can uh, uh, sell individual. Yeah. 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 A vending machine. Yeah. A vending machine that, that you choose your dog. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Yeah. You, can, you have to recognize you know, where you are. So when you find your dog the best, how do I like it? You know, when you uh, see yourself in some of this. We often have people who say to us, but how do you have to explain what this is? But that's not what artists do. <laughs> and it's not what they should do. I mean, you do, but it's also that you're supposed to be interacting with the individual piece, and each person will read it in a different way. But I love about seeing all of these guys out here. I feel like it's, I was walking down the street, and everybody's different, similar height, you know, and everything. But, you know, we're all just sort of walking around and wiping their heads at somebody that they look different or good. Or bad or whatever, but I love it. I love that they're all standing over there just all looking at us. <laughs> I have a question. Maybe you don't want to explain, but um the one of the first pieces that you showed with the the man holding the fire. Yeah, fire that bed. reminded me of Prometheus, the whole Prometheus yes. mess. Prometheus. Ah, Prometheus. Prometheus. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And I then wandered into the idea of Frankenstein, who was related to that whole Promethean myth in terms of assembling things from other parts, which yeah, is what we do. Actually, has been the first, now with the children of Jupiter, he and he created man, man from clay. From clay. From clay. The, the, you know, originally. But the, also the problem, the, the problem that he creates, because he gave fire to Bad game, right? And that was a big problem because uh, the, the gods get angry, yeah, angry with him because you know, if you gave uh, the technology, this is the thing because with fire, you start the idea of the technology, and then technology is what we have today. It makes matter the technology gone. Technology go ahead <laughs> for the own uh, way, you know. It's uh, uh, Something uh, like that. It's, it's very, very uh, good question. To me, archetypes actually a connection to their cultures in the unconscious. It's, it's, a, it's a language it's a that yes, we can no uh, share with uh, every. every you know, all the culture, because uh, it's the same, uh, more or less, you know, they are related. Yeah, yeah. So when you look at different places, right, it seems to be different times of between things and the archetype of different places, two or three different places, two or three different places, two or three different places, different places. Okay. to a certain extent, right now, we're going back to, to Fianza, and um, the biggest group of work, body of work that Tyler made in the Netherlands is called Protestant Madonnas. Oh. And oh. in that case, he had, right before we were leaving, he said, I have to bring something to start with. And so he found a series of figurines, one of which was a Madonna. Yeah, yeah finish the story. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. uh, but uh, what she asked, okay, it's saying the sitting in the south of the country, it was to do this song. Yes, yes, I am. I'm trying to be involved. You can't imagine how much uh, when I walk on the street in Philadelphia, how much, uh, you know, also, you know, a little brutal, a little. Or, you know, rough sometimes. You know. Philadelphia? <laughs> <laughs> I am quite with the architecture because uh, we are, you know, this idea of the history. And so always we see, uh, you know, the building and then uh, maybe linked with the, the, the modern building and then all oh, that um, particular fragment that belong at this other period, you know, we are crazy. Yes, that's the absolute worst for me when I went to Italy and saw everything that was so cool, contemporary, 17th century, you know, like everything 
it's, it's just the fact that there's so much history mm -hmm. yes you walk through it is so different from here just here and there yeah well here i when i go around uh, i feel a lot uh, apart for sure because you know here all the you know um uh, and all this and so when uh, you know the society all the leftover uh, all the garbage they start the uh, lamerbot song for example they put together they create this amazing garbage you know, day is a the call to you know <laughs> yeah. uh, come from the past station you know this bright color that i do in my school you know and I think that's <laughs> Yes, yes, and so I try to get uh, you know the spirit of the other place. When I was in Netherlands, I thought it was completely a surprise that I didn't know Netherlands culture. My, I understood how much important it is in the world, but for sure in, in Europe, and uh, it was it's, it's very important, very very important. Well, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you both. <laughs> Thank um.